Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing super, super well. So welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna be talking about what happened to 28-year-old Abby Choi. This case is very highly requested and I apologize that it took me so much time to get this up, but there was just a lot of research to do for this and a lot of news articles and you know, the news wasn't in English, the interviews weren't in English. So it just took some time for me to gather all of this information and you know, try to translate it as best as I could. So I really appreciate your patience on this. Now, what happened to Abby is truly devastating. I don't understand how people can be so evil and just so ungrateful. Like this is one of those cases that just makes you so upset because why did this have to happen? Why did this have to happen to Abby? Someone that was so kind and generous, grateful, gracious, and just kind. Like I can't even emphasize how nice this person was. So this video is definitely a lot to take in and I do want to put a trigger warning out there because what we're going to be talking about is graphic. So yeah, today we're going to be talking about what happened to Abby Choi. But all right, you guys, with that, let's jump right into today's video. Abby Choi was born on July 11th, 1994 in Hong Kong, China. Now, shortly after she was born, her mother and her father divorced and her mother remarried to a man in Hong Kong with the last name Choi, hence the name Abby Choi. Now, Abby's mom and her stepfather had two children, giving Abby two sisters. Now, the Choi family was extremely wealthy and they actually owned a construction and mining business in China. There isn't too much about the family, like I wasn't able to find, you know, more background into them besides, you know, information about their wealth and about their company and how they were a very high class family. Like when I think of this family, it kind of reminds me of like Gossip Girl vibes. Like, you know, just very wealthy, well-known families in the area with lots of money. So I don't know too much about them, but I do know that the three daughters and their mother were very close. Now, as Abby got older, she actually grew quite a prominent social media presence and she had over 100,000 followers on Instagram. She had this Instagram account where she would share everything about her personal life. Her Instagram is really nice if you guys want to take a look at it it's really nice to see what abby's life was like before all of this happened and on this instagram she would share these fashion trips that she would go on she would show photos of her modeling you know photos of her at these luxurious events that she would go to in paris london you know everywhere she was an international girl and like i said before she was giving gossip girl like i feel like she kind of reminds me of like blair and serena just like very socialite going to all these charity events and galas and just living in that type of lifestyle. Like that's exactly how I picture Abby's life to be. She went on all of these amazing trips with these designer brands and she would go to fashion shows and charity events and she even appeared in Vogue and in Harper's Bazaar among other fashion magazines. So yeah, if you take a scroll through Abby's Instagram, you can just see the type of lifestyle that she was living. She honestly looks like a princess. You know, all of the dresses that she has are absolutely stunning and Abby herself is absolutely beautiful. She just looks very dainty and graceful and, like I said, a princess. She actually had this really cute series on Instagram called Abby in Paris, you know, kind of mimicking the Netflix show Emily in Paris. So she would make these little vlogs of all her journeys in Paris and it was just really cute. Now, in an interview that she did with the fashion magazine Le Officiel Monaco, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Sorry if I just completely butchered that. But she said, quote, I'm always absorbing inspiration and trying new styles. I'm fond of mixing and combining different looks. Now, a few days before her death, she actually posted a photo on Instagram of her as a cover of Le Officiel Monaco. And she captioned it, quote, from Hong Kong to the cover of Le Officiel Monaco. My journey as a style icon continues. 
grateful for this recognition and the continued support along the way. So yeah, based on all of that, you guys can tell, you know, what kind of life Abby was living. Now, despite living this luxurious lifestyle, Abby always remained kind and humble. A close friend of Abby named Bernard told the news, quote, I haven't imagined that a person who's so good, so full of love, so innocent, a person who doesn't do anything bad will be killed like this. My heart is still heavy. I can't sleep well. Now, Bernard's wife said, quote, she was a type of person that wouldn't have enemies. You know, Abby always donated to various charities and she was just an overall very kind and loving person. And I feel like that's, you know, something typical that people say with these videos, like it, everyone was so nice and caring, but that's actually how Abby was. Like every single person that spoke about Abby says that she's a type of person that would give you anything. You needed clothes, you needed food, you needed, you know, a place to live. She would help you out with that. And, you know, she just seemed like she had such an amazing and generous soul. Uh, Abby so let's talk a little bit about Abby's love life. She was actually married twice before her death and she met her first husband, Alex Kwong, when she was just 15 years old. They actually knew each other from school and they actually got married in 2012 when she was just 18 years old, which is very young. You know, her family was kind of nervous about this. They told her, you know, maybe just take a step back and think about this. You know, do you actually want to get married at 18 years old? So they weren't saying no because they didn't like Alex or his family or anything like that. They were just more worried about the fact that she was so young because I feel like 18 is a very young age to get married. So they let Abby know about their opinion, but you know, despite what her parents thought, Abby and Alex decided to go through with the marriage and they ended up having two children together. And then just three years after they tied the knot, the pair decided to get a divorce. After the divorce, they shared custody of the children and Abby still remained in contact with Alex, with his family, you know, with everybody. And his family included her brother-in-law and Anthony Kwong, her father-in-law, Kao Kwong, and her mother-in-law, Jenny Lin. Now, we will get into this family a little bit later, but even after the divorce, Abby continued to help out the father of her children and his side of the family. These people don't even share blood with her, but they did share blood with her children. So, of course, she wanted to help out her kids' grandparents and their uncle and their father. So, she made sure that they were taken care of even after the divorce. Now, the Kwong family didn't really come from a lot of money compared to Abby's family, you know, Abby's family was very wealthy and very well known and just high class. And the Kwong family was not like that. So of course, Abby wanted to help them out and just make sure that her kids had like a safe and, you know, good environment to be in when they went to go visit their father. So after the divorce, Abby actually got remarried to a man named Chris Tam in 2016. Chris spoke to the South China Morning Post and he talked about how him and Abby met. Now a little bit about Chris, he's actually the son of a founder of a very popular restaurant chain called called Tamjai, and he says that he actually met Abby through her ex-husband, Alex. Alex and Chris were junior high classmates before they even knew who Abby was, so they knew each other before they even knew Abby. Alex later switched to another school where he befriended Abby, and then Alex introduced Abby to Chris, and then the three of them would actually hang out together. So they were all connected in some type of way. Now, when Chris and Abby met, he says that he wasn't this super, you know, rich and wealthy person yet. He was, as he described, describes himself kind of like a nobody, like a simple person and an introvert. So that's how the pair met. And when they got married, they actually did not register their marriage legally. They did have this grand ceremony and it was really beautiful and really intimate and it was perfect for them, but nothing was legally documented. Abby did say that she would get to it, but she was just a little bit too busy to ever file the paperwork. At their wedding, Chris said, quote, I hope that our days ahead will get better and better. And I hope that you will 
still be by my side and take good care of me when my hair turns completely white. Which is just so heartbreaking because their story was cut so short and they were so happy together and everyone says that this was kind of like a fairy tale wedding. You know, Chris came from a wealthy family and so did Abby, so it was kind of like, you know, a princess marrying a prince. So Chris and Abby eventually had two children together and, you know, despite remarrying, Abby still remained in contact with her ex-husband and his family. And all of them would often go on vacations together, they would go to trips and have dinners with both families, which is very mature of her. Like, I don't know of a lot of people that would still do that after a divorce, especially not just with your ex-husband, but also with your ex-husband's sibling and his parents. You know, that's kind of a lot to take in, but that's just the kind of person that Abby was. You know, she was just so kind and so generous, and she wanted her kids from her first marriage to continue to have a good relationship with their father and with his side of the family, as well as with the new family that she created with Chris. You know, she just wanted everyone to get along, so she was very kind and giving, and she would actually pay for these vacations, and she just wanted to make sure that Alex and his side of the family were still taken care of, despite not being married to each other. She even hired her ex-brother-in-law, Anthony, as her personal driver because he was currently jobless, and she even ran a pancake stall named Bear Bear Snack with him at one point. The two families actually got along quite well because, again, Chris and Alex did know each other from when they were younger, and Chris was really nice as well. You know, he's a wonderful husband, and I don't know if a lot of husbands would be okay with this type of arrangement, but Chris was just so nice that he was happy that Abby was, you know, still in contact with her ex-husband and that his stepkids were also close to the family. So, you know, he didn't mind that Abby was so generous with the Kwongs. Now, eventually, Abby decided that it was best to purchase a four-bedroom luxury apartment for her ex-husband's family and the children she shared with Alex Kwong to live in for her to kind of have like peace of mind knowing that her children were living in a safe place. This luxury $9.3 million US apartment was in the Hong Kong Kadori Hill neighborhood, which is a very affluent area to live in. Like it's a really nice area. Now, Abby had purchased this apartment herself, but she actually registered the ownership to her ex-father-in-law, Kao Kwong, to avoid paying a stamp duty of almost a million US dollars. So it's clear that Abby was very generous and she had a huge heart. I mean, she purchased the family a luxurious apartment. That's not really something that you hear every single day. You know, someone putting this kind of work into her ex-husband and his own family. Again, people that are not even blood related to her. I feel like I keep saying this, but I just want to emphasize how kind Abby was because she had no obligation to do this, but she did. She took care of the grandparents and the relatives of her two children. And at this point, it honestly seemed like everyone was happy. You now her ex-husband's family was living in this very prestigious and luxurious apartment rent-free. Abby was living with her new husband and their new children and the two families would frequently get together and bond. So at this point, it just seemed like everything was going good. However, that would all change. So let's talk about the day that Abby went missing. On February 21st, 2023, Abby was supposed to be driven to pick up one of her children from school by her personal driver, who, if you remember, was also her ex-brother-in-law, Anthony Kwong. However, she never made it to her child's school. This raised a lot of red flags because this wasn't like Abby to just leave her children unattended and just disappear. She didn't call anyone to let them know where she was going. She didn't text anybody. It was as if she just completely vanished. She wasn't answering any anybody's phone calls or text messages, so everyone in the family started to grow very concerned for what happened to Abby. In fact, her parents thought that maybe she had been kidnapped for a ransom, because again, she came from such a wealthy family. You know, besides her own family being wealthy, Chris was also wealthy, so they all figured that maybe someone had followed her or had stalked her and kidnapped her, so the family was actually just waiting for the ransom call to come in. But it never did. After a bit, Chris decided to call the police and report his wife as missing. Detectives were able to get their hands on CCTV footage and it confirmed that yes, Abby was picked up by her former brother-in-law, Anthony, and she was last seen wearing a white t-shirt, white pants, white shoes, and she was also carrying a purple handbag. Her good friend, Pao Joyi, was offering a large money reward for any information on her whereabouts, and even another online influencer named Doris added 
added to the reward as well. Like I said, it just wasn't like Abby to just completely vanish and just go missing. So all of her friends and her family were extremely worried for her. Now, when investigators began to try and figure out, you know, where Abby went, officers decided to go question the Kwong family. You know, since the last person that she was seen with was with her ex-brother-in-law and her ex-husband was also a part of the picture. And I feel like when these type of cases happen, you know, police always look at the ex. You know, that's just the way things go. So police went over to go speak to the Kwong family, but they weren't very helpful. In fact, they were actually kind of rude to the police. They were offering, you know, false statements. They were kind of just saying, you know, confusing things to try to confuse the police. And they were kind of wasting the police officer's time, which right off the bat was very suspicious because why would they want to cause confusion regarding Abby's disappearance? You know, it's just very odd behavior. So police decided to dig into the Kwong family and figure out what they were hiding. Now, upon further investigations, police were able to figure out why the Kwong family was acting so suspicious. Last year in 2022, Abby was actually doing some financial rearrangements and she planned on selling the luxurious apartment that she had purchased for her ex-husband and his family. She actually went to go consult with a lawyer about this because again, she bought the apartment with her own money, but it was under the father-in-law's name. So she went to go speak to attorney about this and the attorney told her that if she could prove that she paid for the apartment with her own money, then she would still receive money from the selling, even if it was an ownership of her ex-father-in-law. So Abby was really trying to make this work and she went to go speak with her ex-father-in-law, with her ex-mother-in-law, with everybody in the family to let them know that she was planning on selling the apartment, but her ex-father-in-law did not take this well. Tao Kwong was actually against her decision and he grew very angry towards her, which to me is crazy because Abby had actually promised them that she would still arrange for them to live somewhere nice even after selling the apartment, which again, she has no obligation to do. I mean, these people were literally living rent free. They did not have to put a penny down to have this very nice apartment. And these people didn't really have jobs. Like the ex-brother-in-law, yes, he worked as Abby's chauffeur and was earning money that way, but he wasn't living this luxurious lifestyle that he would be pretending to live on on Instagram. So on Instagram, he would pose with all these bottles at the clubs and all these watches and just like kind of making it seem like he was paying for all this himself when it's like, I don't know if he actually was paying for those things or if Abby was paying for him. So this family just seemed very ungrateful. You know, Abby was telling them, hey, don't worry, I'm still going to take care of you even after I sell this apartment. But yet the family did not think that was the right decision. They were upset with Abby. And again, it's just crazy to me that they could be so ungrateful when they were literally living rent free. The family should have been like, thank you, Abby. Like, thank you for paying this apartment for so many years and for still offering to pay for our lives. But no, instead, they acted ungrateful and completely entitled. Now, apart from this to the police, it didn't come as that shocking that the Kwong family could be involved in the disappearance of Abby. In fact, her ex-father-in-law, Kao Kwong, is a former police sergeant and he was actually forced to resign after being accused of raping a woman. Her ex-brother-in-law was being sued by banks for unpaid debt and her ex-husband, Alex Kwong, was involved in a scam that involved conning men on social media into making fake investments and robbed luxury jewelry. He actually had been wanted since 2015 by the police. And as for the mother-in-law, Jenny, she allegedly had filed for bankruptcy a few years back. So it's clear that the Kwong family had a lot of money issues and that they were not good people. I mean, the father was literally accused of R-wording someone while he was a police officer. So these people are just not good and the fact that they were just living off of Abby and her wealth that she so generously shared with them even though she didn't have to and they were still being rude towards her is crazy. So let's go back to the day that Abby disappeared. Police say that she was lured by her ex-brother-in-law Anthony to drive her to pick up her child from school but instead of actually driving her to school her ex-husband Alex stopped and boarded the car as they were driving into an entrance of a tunnel. The two brothers were then seen carrying something large into an apartment that was in this nice suburban neighborhood on surveillance footage. Now, upon seeing this footage and learning all of this information, on February 24th, 2023, officers arrived at this apartment that was previously rented earlier that month by her ex-father-in-law, Kao Kwong. And upon entering the apartment, they said that it didn't look like anyone lived there. You know, there were two bedrooms in this apartment, but it looked completely empty. There really wasn't any furniture and the walls were covered in fabric, which they thought 
was very weird. Now, what they discovered next is truly horrifying, and I just want to put a trigger warning out there because what I'm going to discuss next is graphic. So police found two deep soup pots, and inside was a layer of thick, congealed fat, and underneath that layer was human tissue, hair, bones, and a human head that was boiled down to the skull. There were also common soup ingredients inside these pots, such as carrots and turnips and radishes and no seasoning and peppers, which is really weird. And inside the refrigerator, they also found two dismembered legs. They kept digging into the apartment and they ended up finding an electric saw, a meat grinder, a hammer, face shields, chopping blades, and black raincoats. They even found Abby's purple handbag that she was last seen carrying. On top of that, they also found a jacket that had the DNA of Abby's ex-mother-in-law, Jenny Lynn. So investigators saw this gruesome scene and it was a lot for them to take in. A lot of investigators actually threw up because of what they were seeing. I mean, just imagine walking into something like this. You know, these investigators are thinking maybe Abby is dead, but I'm sure they were not thinking that Abby was completely dismembered. It was a very shocking scene and investigators just couldn't believe that this was real. So they kept looking at everything that was in the apartment and that's when they realized that not all of Abby's remains were found. They were actually still missing Abby's hands and her torso. So going back to the Kwong family, police say that the morning after her disappearance and dismemberment, Cao Kwong and Anthony were caught on surveillance video disposing of more body parts in a nearby cemetery. So after looking at that footage, police decided that, you know, this is probably where they left her torso and her hands. So the Hong Kong police and dive team searched waters and they even had a team with dogs searching the cemetery and searching surrounding areas, as well as a landfill. But police did not find her missing remains. And unfortunately, to this day, Abby's torso and her hands are still missing. Forensic experts did find a 6.5 centimeter by 5.5 centimeter hole at the back of Abby's skull. So police believe that maybe this hole was the blow that killed Abby, since there was also blood splatter inside the vehicle that her ex-brother-in-law, Anthony, picked her up in, which suggests to the police that she was most likely attacked in the car. I know the details of this are so much and very heavy to listen to. When I first heard about this case, I couldn't believe it was real. Like, how could someone do something so evil? You know, to someone so kind and to literally the mother of your children. It's crazy. And the fact that there were like carrots and radishes inside the pot, it's all very confusing. And I just don't understand what they were planning on doing or why they would set it up this way. Now we know why the Kwong family was acting so suspicious after Abby disappeared because they had done something so horrific and disturbing to her. So again, police believe that this was a setup. Anthony Kwong was in on this, and when he picked up Abby that day to go take her to her children's school, he knew that she was not going to make it there. And they had planned this entire thing. But why? Why did they do this? Now, as soon as police found all of this evidence and they found the body parts of Abby Choi, they started honing in on the Kwong family. I mean, they were seen moving things around the apartment. You know, they actually spoke to a couple of witnesses that said that they saw the father, Kao Kwong, pulling up to the apartment and just acting very suspicious. You know, he would pull up to the apartment and he would kind of like look around to see if anybody was looking at him, which is very odd behavior. And again, all their behavior has been odd since Abby disappeared. So of course, police wanted to catch them. And on February 24th, 2023, Hong Kong police arrested Kao Kwong and Anthony Kwong for the murder of Abby Choi, as well as the mother-in-law, Jenny Lee, for destroying evidence. However, Abby's ex-husband, Alex Kwong was nowhere to be found, and a manhunt ensued to find him. It turns out that the day that Abby was murdered, he actually fled to another luxury apartment in central Hong Kong to hide. Thankfully, he was located on February 25th at about 1 p.m. at a pier trying to flee on a speedboat with $86,000 in cash and various luxury watches. So all four family members, Alex, his brother, and their two parents were finally held in custody. However, they weren't the only people arrested. There were actually three more people connected to the murder of Abby Choi. So first, we have a 47-year-old woman who was arrested for aiding and abetting a murder suspect. Allegedly, she helped Kao Kwong, the father, rent the property where Abby was dismembered, as well as a different apartment that served as a hideout for Alex the day that Abby went missing. She was a masseuse at the time, and according to certain articles, she was actually having an affair with Kao Kwong for several 
months. So yeah, Cao Kuang was cheating on his wife with this woman and you know, she was arrested and released on bail, but she has to report to police about her whereabouts and she was due back in court on May 8th. Now, the second person arrested is a 41-year-old man who is a yacht rental agent who was actually charged with assisting an offender with the intent to impede prosecution. Now, this man allegedly organized the escape of Alex for money, specifically around 300,000 Hong Kong dollars. He was actually released on bail and he has a travel ban, so he did have to give up his passport and he's not allowed to leave. He's also required to report to police twice a week about what he's doing and he's supposed to notify them of any change of address. Now, last but not least, the third person arrested in connection to the murder of Abby Choi is a 29-year-old influencer named Irene, who was also charged for assisting an offender with the intent to impede prosecution. Now, Irene has over 30,000 followers on social media, and she allegedly assisted in arranging the yacht for Alex Kwong to flee in. Now, she was arrested, and she was released on bail, and she also has a travel ban. So she did give up her passport, and she's not allowed to leave. She's also supposed to notify police about any changes of address and she also has to check in on them twice a week. Now when Irene was arrested, so many people just immediately went to her Instagram and they started flooding her page with all of these hateful messages and a lot of people have questioned, you know, the judgment of Irene's best friend who is also another influencer named Chan. Now Chan came out and she actually defended Irene on Instagram and she has over 20,000 followers. So she went on Instagram stories and, you know, she expressed her anger at the media's coverage of Irene's arrest, accusing them of reporting fake news. Now, Irene and Chan have been best friends for many years. Irene actually served as a bridesmaid at Chan's wedding. I don't know. I feel like I get it. Like you want to defend your friend. You don't want to believe that they're involved with something like this. But if it's true that Irene did help Abby Choi's ex-husband, you know, try to run away and escape, then that's wrong. And she should be punished for what she did. Now, assisting an offender with their apprehension or prosecution is actually punishable by by two years in jail and a $5,000 fine in Hong Kong dollars if the case is tried before a magistrate. Now, the penalty rises up to 10 years in prison if the case is heard before a judge and a jury. So we will see what happens with this trio and also what happens with the main four suspects in this case, which are Abby Choi's ex-husband, her ex-brother-in-law, and her ex-in-laws. It's just crazy to me. I'm like, seven people? Like, seven people were involved with this? Why? Why would this trio have help out the Kwong family. I mean, if the girl was having an affair with Cao Kwong and, you know, all this stuff, maybe that's why she helped out. But everyone else, I don't really understand. I just find it crazy how three people were willing to help Alex run away. Now, when all the gruesome details were released to the public, it just shocked everybody. It was all over the news and on social media. I mean, I remember logging into Twitter and seeing Abby Choi's face and reading the details of what happened to her. I just couldn't believe it. I was like, what? Like her body parts were found in a pot of soup? Like that doesn't make sense. And then as I started digging deeper into it and, you know, reading about her in-laws and her ex-husband, I just could not believe that people could be so evil in this world and just so ungrateful. And the things that people do for money are insane. It was just a lot for the public to take in and I can't even imagine how Abby's family was feeling at this time. I mean, they all thought that Abby maybe was taken for ransom and, you know, something like that had happened. But to hear that Abby was allegedly killed by her ex-husband and his family and then dismembered and put into these pots with soup. It's just terrible and my heart just absolutely breaks for Abby's family and for her friends. Now everyone in Hong Kong was just shocked by this as well. You know the city has extremely low homicide rates in comparison to the rest of the world. The last homicides to catch the media's attention globally was in 2013 when a boy killed his parents and kept their heads in the fridge. Now another case happened in 1999 when a 23-year-old girl was dismembered. Her skull was actually found sewn inside a Hello Kitty plush doll, which brought up the question to the public, why is it common for murderers in Hong Kong to have such gruesome methods of hiding the victim's bodies? Well, Philip Bay, a semi-retired forensic pathologist who has previously worked with the Hong Kong police, says, quote, most people live in apartment blocks on top of each other. We don't have individuals with houses and gardens where you can go out and dig a hole and try to bury a body. You're never really alone. Your neighbors are above you, below you, next to you. Anything out of the ordinary will catch someone's attention. In Hong Kong's subtropical, humid climate, the smell of the body very quickly captures attention, hence why some murderers might attempt to remove the smell
smell by cooking dismembered parts. Now that kind of just offers us some type of explanation as to why victims have been found in such grotesque ways in the past and possibly why the Kwongs decided to do this as well. You know, this is why they decided to dismember her and put her body in these pots because they planned on cooking her. Now the public also began comparing this case to the 2019 South Korean film Parasite. The Kwong family was leeching off of Abby, you know, similar to how the family is in the movie. And it's really terrible that something that happened in a movie kind of happened in real life. Obviously it's not the same, but a lot of people just felt like it was kind of similar how, you know, a family leeching off of each other can turn so evil. Apart from her Instagram account being flooded by comments and condolences by people all over the world, the charities that Abby donated to did make statements about her passing. The Abby and Poems Charitable Organization, which is an animal rescue nonprofit co-founded by Abby, said, quote, you always helped animals and you were a loving and kind person. Please rest in peace and we will carry on your legacy. Another member of the charity recalls a memory that they had with Abby and they describe a time where she once saved an injured cat that was hit by a car. Oh,我们做不做? The city of Hong Kong was heartbroken by the murder of such a kind soul. The village where the apartment was located was left in distress, and so many people decided to move away because they couldn't help dealing with the fact that, you know, a house in this neighborhood had a dead body in it, a dismembered dead body. So a lot of people moved away, and the villagers actually held ceremonies where they would pray to calm Abby's spirit. They would light incense, and they would bring paper offerings, which is a very beautiful and thoughtful thing for them to do. I mean, a lot of these people didn't even know Abby. Abby's family gathered near the apartment dressed in black to pay their respects to her, and they also decided to hold a vigil for her that will take place on June 18th that will then be followed by a funeral the next morning before her remains are taken to a monastery to be cremated. People pay tribute to the 28-year-old victim by performing a Taoist ritual behind the police cordon. Tam burnt incense and bowed, as did his mother, Choi's mother, and other relatives. There was a heart-wrenching moment when the model's mother cried that she would never see her daughter again. It's also alleged that Abby's family will hire a high-tech firm from overseas to use 3D printing and a makeup service to recreate her face on her skull for respect of those who wish to view and mourn her at the funeral. It's just very sad, you know, so why did all of this happen? Why did they have to do this to Abby? You know, someone who was so kind to them and so giving. I mean, she really had no obligation to support her ex-husband after the divorce. You know, she didn't have to support his parents. She didn't have to support her ex-brother-in-law, but still she did it because that's the kind of person that she was. It just really breaks my heart that these people were abusing of her kindness and instead of being grateful for everything that Abby was doing for them, they decided to be rude. They decided to be entitled and then they decided to kill her. It's just really sad and it's scary how money can transform people. You know, all of this was over money. You know, it's believed that when Abby told the family that she was going to sell the apartment and that she was going to move them to a new place, that Kao Kwong did not take this well and that from that moment, he decided to plan the murder of Abby Choi. Again, one of the main reasons that Abby wanted to help out her ex-in-laws and her ex-family is because of her children. So the fact that these people were willing to do something so horrible and brutal to the mother of the children, like Alex literally did this to the mother of his own children. The grandparents did this to, I mean, I just can't. It just, it goes on and on of how evil this truly is. And I just, my heart breaks for the children. I mean, they're gonna grow up and they're gonna learn about what their father father, their uncle, and their grandparents 
did to their own mother. Can you imagine knowing that, that your father did something so terrible and that your father and your grandparents are these evil, disgusting people that did something so horrific all because they were greedy? This is a truly horrifying case because Abby was so kind to those around her and she cared so much for her family. Her husband told the media that he was very thankful to have had Abby in his life and he praised her for being supportive and that when Abby was alive, she was a very kind person and she just always wanted to help people. He also said, quote, I feel anyone who had a chance to be her family or her friend is blessed. A friend of Abby also spoke publicly and said that they and Abby's mother are now caring for all four of her children and that she told them to avoid all news media and to delete news apps from their phones. That way they could grieve in peace and, you know, not learn about the horrific details of their mother's death. It was also reported that the phones at the elite international school where one of Abby's children attended actually suspended the use of all cell phones and had a therapy team on site to offer support to the students. I mean, this really impacted the city. It impacted everyone. My heart just goes out to Abby's family and to her friends. I am so sorry that this happened to you and I hope that you all get justice and that everything that happened comes to light. I mean, this shouldn't have happened and it's just not fair. But Abby will be remembered as the kind, beautiful, and generous person that she was. I will leave her Instagram down below if you guys would like to leave a kind comment under any of her post and just kind of go through it so you guys can see you know what kind of person abby was so all of that will be linked down below and i just want to thank you guys for taking the time to listen to what happened to abby Choi. i would love to know what you guys think about this down below and i can definitely make a part two video in the future when more things start to develop but with that that is pretty much all the information i have for today's video thank you guys so much for being here and if there's ever any other cases that you guys would like me to cover make sure to leave me a comment down below if you haven't checked out the latest episode of my podcast what happened i will also link it down below so you guys can watch it and show the podcast some support but yeah i think that's pretty much all i have to say i will see you all in the next video bye guys